we are going to determine the electronic and molecular geometries of the following molecules according to the steps that we discussed in the previous video about the Vesper model. So once we follow the steps and determine the geometry, we're going to pick from these possibilities here. So we have five possibilities, the correct geometry and uh, place it near the structure so we can actually see how it looks in 3D geometry. So all of these molecules uh, go to up to four for the steric number right here. So remember steric number is the number of the electron pairs around the central atom. This can be bonding and non-bonding electrons. So these molecules do not exceed the octet. All of these are going to go to steric number four. Let's start with the first one. Let's start with the boron trifluoride. Let's put it here. So A, we have B, F3. Draw the Lewis structure of the molecule. So if we do it briefly, what we want to do first is we want to find the valence electrons for the boron and fluorine, and this we do according to the periodic table. If you look up the boron, you will see that it's in group three, which means that boron has three electrons and fluorine in group seven. And we also have three fluorines here. So we're going to multiply this by three and we have 21 electrons from fluorine. Now together, the sum of these electrons is 24 so we have 24 electrons and we're going to make this molecule and arrange the lone pairs of electrons according to the rules of the Lewis structure. So the first thing in the Lewis structure what you want to do is to determine the skeletal structure which means that how are these going to be connected right for example are you going to connect them like this or you actually want to put the boron in the middle or in any other way. So in order to do it, um, you can also refer to the Lewis structure video and follow the steps. But what the Lewis structure theory says is that first we're going to determine the atom that has the highest bonding capacity, which means the one that needs more electrons to get to an octet. So boron has three electrons, and if it was to get an octet, it would need to have five more electrons. One other thing that it says in the Lewis structure theory that we're going to put more electronegative atoms, so in this case fluorine, on the terminal side. Also if it was a hydrogen that also goes on the terminal side. So based on all of these guidelines we're going to put the boron in the middle. So boron is going to go in the middle and then it's going to be connected with three fluorines. So let's put these three fluorines here. One, two, three. Next, what we want to do is count how many electrons we have used. We have made three bonds, so six electrons are gone, but we had 24, so we have still 18 electrons left. And these electrons we're going to put on a more electronegative atom, which is in this case is the fluorine. So let's put the lone pairs on fluorine. And once we do that, the fluorine has the octet and it follows the octet, and this molecule has a good Lewis structure. Boron is an exception to an octet, so we don't worry about the octet on the boron. Now this is the Lewis structure. Let's go to the next step. And here it says count number of the atoms and lone pairs on the central atom. So the atoms are here. We have one fluorine, two, and three. We have three atoms, and for the lone pairs, no lone pairs. So the steric number of this molecule is equal to three. And so how do we arrange this molecule the atoms in this molecule such that they are as far away from each other as possible and the answer here is that so we have one two three which is called trigonal planar and this is the correct geometry for this molecule and the angles here are going to be 120 degrees that will be both the electronic geometry and the molecular geometry they are the same because there's no lone pairs of electrons on boron now let's go to the next molecule, molecule B. We have CH2O. So again, what we want to do is find the number of valence electrons. Carbon has four valence electrons. Hydrogen has one, but we have two of them. So we have two electrons here. And oxygen has six because it's in group six. So what we have is 12 electrons total. And now next, what we're going to do is still in this step, drawing the Lewis structure, we're going to put the carbon in the middle and then oxygen and the hydrogen on the side. Again, so this is based on the guidelines, the rules in the Lewis structure. We're going to put the more electronegative atom on the terminal side and also the hydrogens go on the terminal side as well. So when we made three bonds, each bond takes two electrons, which means that here again, six electrons are taken. So six electrons are gone 
and what I have here is six more electrons. What I do, I put them on the oxygen because oxygen is the more electronegative, the most electronegative atom in fact here. And then I check for the octets. Carbon is in group four, so it needs to have an octet. Same with the oxygen. Hydrogens are okay with one bond. In fact, they always have one bond. Now, so uh, carbon does not have an octet. It has three bonds, which means that it only has six electrons around it, which means we're going to take one of these electrons and move it in the middle so that the carbon and oxygen can share it. And we're going to have this structure. We're going to have the double bond and the hydrogens on the side. Let's put the two lone pairs of electrons. And at this point, we're going to calculate the steric number. What's the steric number for carbon? How many atoms does it have? One, two, three. Here, we don't pay attention that it's a double bond. We're only looking at how many atoms it has and how many lone pairs it has, the carbon. So carbon doesn't have any lone pairs, but it has three atoms. So the steric number of the carbon is three. Similar to the previous example with the boron trifluoride, if the steric number is three, we're going to get a trigonal planar geometry. And this is how the molecule is going to look in a 3D dimension. So next we have hydrocyanic acid. So C is HCN, and the previous molecule is the formaldehyde, it's the name of the molecule. Here we have the hydrocyanic acid. Step one in determining the Lewis structure. So how many valence electrons we have? H1, C4, this is just based on the group numbers, and nitrogen 5. So we have 10 electrons, and now we're thinking about how to arrange them. Hydrogen is going to be on the side. Nitrogen is more electronegative than the carbon, so it is also going to be on the side, which means that the only option here is to put the C here, and I put the nitrogen on the side as well. And another reason here is because the carbon has a higher bonding capacity, which means that it needs to have four bonds to complete an octet, while the nitrogen can only have three bonds, and it's still going to have an octet. So how many electrons have we used? We have used two here and two here for the bonds. Four electrons are gone, and we still have six electrons, and we're going to put these six electrons around the nitrogen atom, because it is the most electronegative atom here. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four, four, five, and six. Three lone pairs of electrons. Now we're checking to make sure that our atoms have an octet. Hydrogen should have one bond. Carbon should have an octet, but it only has two bonds, four electrons, which means that I'm going to take one of these pairs and bring it in the middle to share between the carbon and the hydrogen. So let's draw this structure here. What I have right now, according to this movement of electrons, I'll have carbon double bonded with a nitrogen, and I have two lone pairs of electrons. But yet again, the carbon has three bonds, which means that it has six electrons. It needs two more electrons. So I'm going to move these electrons one more time. These are going to go here. And so let's draw it here. Now I'm going to have H, C, now with a triple bond and one lone pair on the nitrogen. And now they have an octet. Carbon and nitrogen have an octet. And this is the proper Lewis structure. The next step, step two here, we're going to look at the steric number. How many atoms and lone pairs of electrons are around the carbon? One two atoms and again triple bond is not important when we're determining the steric number it's only number of the atoms and the lone pairs so steric number here is equal to two and if you have two things two units two atoms that do not like each other they repel each other they're going to be separated by 180 degrees which corresponds to the linear structure so this is going to be both the electronic and molecular geometry of the hydrocyanic acid Okay, let's go to the next molecule. Beryllium chloride, so we have D here, and we're going to count the number of the electrons. Beryllium number two, so group two, which means that beryllium has two electrons, and then chlorine has seven electrons because it's group seven. So Cl will be seven times two because we have two chlorines, and this is 14 electrons coming from the chlorines. Two from the beryllium, so total, in total we have 16 electrons, and we're going to put the beryllium in the middle, chlorines on the side, because chlorines are more electronegative. This is a non-metal, beryllium is a metal. So put them on the side and we count how many electrons we have used. One, two, two bonds here, each taking two electrons. Four electrons have been used and we have 12 electrons left. We're going to distribute the 12 electrons equally between the two chlorines. So six on each, three lone pairs. And this is the proper Lewis structure for this molecule. Beryllium is an exception to octet, but chlorine should follow the octet rule. 
Next, we're going to count the steric number. So for steric number of beryllium, we have two atoms, no lone pairs. Steric number is equal to two, and this again corresponds to the linear structure. Let's go to the next molecule, molecule E. So we have CH2Cl2, dichloromethane. That's the name of this molecule. And here again, so let's count number of the electrons. Carbon, we have one carbon, group four, four electrons. We have two hydrogens, so two electrons from the hydrogens. And we have two chlorines, which means that we have 14 electrons from them. So 18, 20, total we have 20 electrons. And we're going to decide the skeletal structure, what is going to be in the middle. Chlorine is more electronegative than carbon, and carbon has a higher bonding capacity. It needs to have four bonds to make an octet. So for these two reasons, carbon is going to be in the middle. And hydrogen, two hydrogens are also going to be on the side, because that's, that's what the hydrogens do. They can only have one bond, so the only option is to put them on the side. And then we put these two chlorines. And then we count how many electrons we have. So we made four bonds so far, eight electrons. Eight electrons are gone and I still have 12 electrons, which needs to be distributed on the chlorines as well. So three lone pairs on each chlorine, and this is the correct Lewis structure because carbon and chlorine have the octet. Next, we're going to determine the steric number one, two, three, and four. No lone pairs on the carbon, so the steric number here is four. Steric number four corresponds to the tetrahedral geometry where the angles are going to be, about 109.5 degrees. Not all of them are going to be equally the same, but generally about this, so the angle is 109.5 degrees. So let's go to the next molecule, molecule F, and we have SOCl2, and let's write down how many valence electrons we have. Sulfur, group six, we have six electrons. Oxygen, the same group, we have six electrons, and we have two chlorines, and chlorine is in group 7, so we have 14 electrons from chlorine. So together, the sum of this is 26 electrons. So we have 26 electrons, and now we need to connect the atoms to get the skeletal structure. So sulfur and oxygen have the same number of valence electrons, which means that the bond capacity is the same for them. They both need to have only two bonds to make an octet, but because oxygen is more electronegative, oxygen is going to be on the terminal side. So because of that, we're going to put the sulfur in the middle and we're going to connect it with an oxygen. And we're also going to connect it with two chlorines. At this point, we're going to count how many electrons we have used. Three bonds, so we have used six electrons. So let's put here six electrons. We have 20 electrons left. And now we're going to put them on the oxygen and the chlorine. So here, six electrons and six also go on the chlorine so they can have the octets. And now we're going to count again. So six, six, and six electrons. We have used another 18 electrons, and at this time we have two electrons left, which can only be on the sulfur. This will correspond now to one resonance structure, but here the atoms are going to be charged, the oxygen and the sulfur, and because of that, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these lone pairs. We have three, but we're gonna take one of them I'm going to write this down that this now will correspond to a sulfur now with double bonded to oxygen and oxygen now has only two lone pairs. I still have these chlorines with the lone pairs of electrons, six here and also one on the sulfur. And now we're going to count the steric number of the sulfur. How many atoms do we have? One, two, three and we have one lone pair. So sulfur is surrounded with four units, which means that the steric number of the sulfur is equal to four, and this corresponds to the tetrahedral geometry. And if I bring a tetrahedral geometry here and put the sulfur in the middle, so this will be the sulfur here, and I'm also going to put the other atoms. So we have oxygen, we have chlorine, and another chlorine. Now this will be double bonded, single bonded, but what is also important here, we have that these lone pairs of electrons. So this is on the sulfur, but in order to determine the molecular geometry, we actually ignore these lone pairs, and so we're not going to pay attention to these. 
And what we'll have is this structure, this geometry, which corresponds to trigonal pyramidal geometry. So this will be the molecular geometry, but for the electronic geometry, it's tetrahedral. The last molecule, SO2, let's write down number of the electrons. Sulfur, six electrons. Oxygen, six electrons, but we have two oxygens, so we have 12. And in total, we have 18 electrons for both atoms. Now, oxygen is more electronegative than the sulfur, so sulfur is going to go in the middle. I'm going to connect the two oxygens and count how many electrons we have used. Two bonds, four electrons, so subtract four here, and we still have 14 electrons left. So now what we want to do is we want to satisfy the octet rule for the more electronegative atom here, which is the oxygen. So let's put three lone pairs on the oxygen to assure that it has an octet, and then count how many electrons we have at this point. So I've used 12 electrons, six here and six here, so the minus 12 electrons, and I still have two electrons left. Now, the only place that we can put these electrons are going to be on the sulfur. So sulfur have this lone pair of electron. And this will be one of the possible Lewis structures. Let's put it this way. And it will have formal charges because of the number of the electrons on the oxygens and also on the sulfur. So we're going to um, draw another structure, another possible structure, the resonance structure for the SO2 by bringing these electrons here to make a bond and bringing these electrons as well to make a bond with the sulfur. Now remember, sulfur is an exception to octet. It can have actually more electrons than eight around it. And if we do it here, what we'll have is S, O, and then another oxygen and the lone pair. So let's put the lone pairs on the oxygen as well. And at this point, we can see that the sulfur has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons around it, but that is okay. It's acceptable for the sulfur. Now let's check and see the steric number. It has one lone pair and it has two atoms. So the steric number of the sulfur here is three. How do we arrange three units around the central atom in the most optimal geometry? It's in trigonal planar. So let's bring this geometry here, trigonal planar, and assign the electrons and the atoms here. So this will be our oxygens, for example. Oxygen and oxygen, and here we have the lone pairs of electrons. So let's put the lone pairs. And here, again, to name the molecular geometry, we're going to ignore the electrons. So if we erase this here, the electrons, we're going to get to this geometry, which is called bent geometry. So this is bent, which is the molecular geometry of the sulfur dioxide, bent, but the electronic geometry of the sulfur dioxide is trigonal planar. And for the bond angle, bring it here. So the predicted angle for trigonal planar is 120 degrees. All of these three angles are predicted to be 120. However, because one unit here is a lone pair of electron and we have two oxygens here, the electrons turn out to be pushing the atoms more. And what happens is that this angle is going to be smaller than 120. Let's say it's about 116 and these are going to be larger. And the same for any other molecule where we have the lone pair. So here we had one lone pair of electron. So this lone pair pushes the atoms more than the other three atoms, each other and the electron. And that's why the angle between these atoms is less than 109 and uh, larger between the lone pairs of electrons and the atoms.